Okay, everyone. So what I'm going to do for this analysis is I have the 60 BPM version from the video that you can check out down in the description below. And uh, I'm going to use it because it has the tab and everything. And we can also see me play at a slow tempo. Uh, I'm going to use it to do this analysis and we're going to check out uh, different measures, different parts of the of the progression. We also are going to be able to hear the chords and the melody in context, the solo in context. And uh, we also have the progression on top, which is pretty cool. So we're going to be able to put some sections of the solo under the microscope. And if I have anything I want to show you in more detail, you know, maybe a fingering or something like that, I'm just going to turn to the camera and show it to you directly on the guitar that I have here. But uh, let's go straight into it. So. The key is D flat major, very important, or you can think about it as B flat minor, uh, probably because obviously the, the whole emphasis of the solo is on the on the B flat. But the cool thing about this progression is that it has a couple of twists here and there, and this is what makes this solo actually really cool. So let's start here. So we start very standard. Uh, we start with a bend to a B flat, and uh, we're going to this G flat major seven chord. So you can consider it just aiming for the third of that G flat major seven. Now, right away, I want to check out this progression, G flat major seven to E flat minor seven to check it out. We're actually going to a B flat major chord and that's the whole interest. Over here, he's already aiming for this D natural at the end of this line. Let's listen to it. So he's doing a chromatic approach to is D natural, which is then going to lead him to this very cliche phrase in B flat major pentatonic, right? So now he's aiming for the major third of that B flat, and uh, that creates really, really cool interest in the harmony, right? So love that line. This is a beautiful line right off the bat. And then we're going to continue with that idea with some chromaticism. And here there's another interesting chord. We've got a B major seven. Now you could think, you know, going to that B uh, major seven chord, you could think, well, I'm going to go to maybe B uh, Lydian or maybe B major. Uh, the reality of it is this chord is going to come a couple times in the progression. You don't really have to think about it as a chord that you have to outline specifically because it's going to be automatically outlined if you remain in a B flat minor pentatonic type of sound. What's going to happen is if the harmony goes here, but you stay here, what you're basically outlining are all the intervals of the Lydian scale. So, right? So here he's not really thinking about that B major seven as oh I'm going to outline this. He's more thinking about oh I'm going to start to go back into the B flat minor tonality because we're going back to the four or the D flat major tonality because we're going back to the four chord, you know. So uh, this is what he's doing by kind of taking it back to uh, to this uh, chromatic line that involves also actually from here uh, that involves uh, bringing back the, uh, the the G flat. So check it out. So right by bringing back that. We've got, we're back into the, uh, the the B flat minor sound that is incidentally going to outline the B major seven type of sound or the B Lydian type of sound. So that's a really cool trick over here, right? Here, nothing, pretty much the same thing. You know, we're, delay we're delaying it a little bit because we've got a B flat sus four. So now we're back into B flat minor pentatonic. If you're a guitarist, you can think that box, right? That F minor seven is part of the key. It's the three chord, right? So right now it's all B flat minor. Going to B flat sus four, we could carry on with the sound of B flat minor because the sus chord doesn't have a third in it. However, when we resolve it, here we have a chromatic line using triplets descending to the third. And now we're going to go back to the same progression, G flat major seven to E flat minor seven to B flat sus four over F this time and back to a B flat to a B flat major. Here he's anticipating 
the uh, the resolution to be flat also because we heard it one time so now you can kind of anticipate the D natural over here let's check out this line <laughs> Oh, interesting. Here, we're bringing this uh, D flat into the progression, okay? This D flat is technically part of the B flat and minor scale, but, uh, because this is the minor third, right? Uh, but it still works over a B flat, and it's also kind of anticipating uh, the fact that we're going to go back to the general B flat tonality with uh, this chord, which, which is actually not an E minor seven, but uh, rather an E flat minor seven. So just a little mistake over here in my notation. Um, but the thing is also because the progression even though you're resolving it to B major B flat major sorry because the overall progression uses chords that are coming from the B flat minor scale or D flat major uh, you can still just you know even over that B flat you could technically just play like the minor pentatonic scale and it would still kind of work so you're actually fine playing this uh, D flat over here right uh, now we've got very cl very cliche but very cool phrases repeated here with uh, going to this E flat minor so going to the two and then going to the three chord okay so all right very nice bend over here again going to the B flat here he's doing it really really well but because he's really aiming for that D natural on the beat so and then outlining this is this is really cool outlining the arpeggio and what's cool is that he's thinking um of ending the arpeggio on the seventh and that's the dominant seventh so he's kind of treating that b flat which is actually how they're doing it uh in the actual arrangement they're kind of treating that b flat major Which does make sense because the sixth chord in a major key you can turn the sixth chord into a dominant chord right it's it's a very typical thing to do in jazz and so that totally works to do it like that to do it like that so considering a b flat uh dominant because you know the six is a good dominant that leads you to the two chord going back to this this time we're going to go back to our typical g flat major seven so typical four to the two chord right. Notice how in this solo, so again, very standard minor pentatonic, notice how um, when he's doing a motif, he's always repeating it. So here we've got this, this very cool motif, right? Um, where he's kind of repeating the same segments. There's also motifs or repetition of ideas at kind of the more macro level, where you can see that the solo is kind of um, structured into having, you know, like, first of all, a, a bend into like a long line and then some bending stuff again into then a long line in 16th notes right uh so, so so there's a very cool structure to the solo and that also you know is uh, why this is a great solo because it tells a great story and this is what you want to do when you're improvising a solo you know it's just it's not just about playing the right notes uh on the right chords it's also about okay what do you have to say how are you going to what, what what is the story you want to tell so Let's check it out. So E flat minus seven to F minus seven into the B flat. So we were, we were around here, I believe. So let's hear it again. Pretty standard pentatonic. So now we're going to go back to this idea to aim for the third. Okay, so. Okay, very nice. Standard pentatonic. So again, here. You know, going to the B major seven. Sorry, I just missed this one. Uh, he's not. He's just thinking back to B flat minor. You know, when he's doing. I actually notated as this, but I believe it's more rhythmically. It's more because he's doing. So it makes more sense with the rhythmic figure he had at the beginning. Uh, so I believe this is what he actually plays. Uh, but he's not thinking B major 7, he's just thinking B flat minor pentatonic. And that's going to automatically outline the right notes for that particular chord. So it's a really cool trick. Back to pretty standard, G flat major 7. Sorry, that's supposed to be F minor 7. Oh, there's, there's quite a few chords I need to uh, 
I need to change over here. I'll make sure to change that in the tab you can download. So this is G flat major seven, and uh, that's supposed to be obviously an F minor seven. Okay, going back to the six. Here, he's not even worrying about the uh, the third. He's playing it as a minor third. Right? What you could do is maybe something like this. But here is just, you know, playing it as a regular pentatonic and you can see that it actually does work. Especially considering the fact that that B flat is, um, you know, is to be considered a dominant chord, which, you know, if you're playing kind of a bluesy uh, type of vocabulary, you can totally play a minor third uh, on a dominant chord. So that's totally fine, right? And then we end with a very typical phrase in B flat minor. So here, obviously, I didn't notate it that way, but to maintain the sustain, I just, you know, keep picking the note and then slowly bend it up to that, uh, to that B flat. So very simple overall. It's just about, um, you know, it's really just about noticing the different places where we want to put more emphasis on the uh, major, the B flat major sound. It's really the, the main gimmick in this solo. Uh, if you, if you, for lack of a better word, <laughs> I don't believe it's a gimmick. It's actually a very cool thing. It's not a simple gimmick, but uh, this is really what you want to do. You know, really aim for that. Um, really, that third. It's really about that D natural. You know, most of the time, and uh, the rest of it is very typical B flat minor pentatonic type of vocabulary. So nothing fancy. It's just about you know putting the right notes in the right place and also having a story, which is another way you could analyze this solo. Is really about analyzing the, the whole story of the solo, which is he really introduces motifs that he repeats and also a structure that he sticks to, right? The idea, it's, it's really cool to do a sort of, it's almost like you have a little A, B structure in your solo, right? So you start with like um, long, longer notes and doing bends and, and, and vibrato stuff. And then you go into a long line of 16th notes and then you go back to some long bends, uh, putting a little triplet in the middle and then going back to a long line, long descending line of 16th, then doing this cool little trick, again, doing some bends, doing some 16th. Now, now repeating this idea, you know, again, this is kind of like a cliche phrase, right? right? And then he kind of repeats, and like he goes back to the idea of repeating a phrase here, right? So this idea, It's kind of reminiscent of what he was doing earlier by repeating the previous phrase. So there's always some kind of structure and, and call and answer. And obviously the idea of ending on that big root, right, of, uh, of, of the minor tonality, just like he started the solo, because he starts the solo on a big bend to a B flat and ends the solo on a big bend to a B flat. So all those things are also what makes this solo great. All right, guys, so that's it for this wonderful solo. So if you want to learn more about it, or if you want to dissect it a little bit more, you can download the tab down in the description. And if you want to learn the solo, I also suggest that you check out this video uh, that actually takes it down to 60 BPM. So you can play along with me and you can also see, uh, have a better angle on all the fingerings I'm using. So make sure to check it out. All right. In the meantime, take care and I'll see you on the next one.